Hey, Mr. Dombrowski, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we're going to talk about writing ionic binary formulas. So, ionic binary formulas, okay. Right. So that's going to be our topic and objective on Oh, on right here. up here? Yep. Okay. So um, we're going to be figuring out how the chemical formula is determined for an ionic compound. So we're going to give you a name, and you're going to have to write out the formula from the name. Okay, because we just practiced doing it backwards, right? Right. So this is the opposite of that last bit. Opposite direction. Of 5A1A. Okay. All right. So um, whenever we have ionic bonds, we have something that's a metal, a cation, and a nonmetal, an anion. And I remember that cation means that it's the positive ion. Right. And right. anion means it's negative. negative. That's right. Okay. Okay. So. So let's start with potassium chloride. So I probably need my uh, periodic table out for this. Yes. Okay. So potassium, I remember that one is K. Uh huh. So if I look at my periodic table, I find K in the first column. Can you remind right. me what that charge would be? Well, that means it's going to have one valence electron, so it's going to lose that one electron and become positive one. Okay. So I'm going to write this positive right above my K. You can write a plus one or just a plus if it's only right. one. Okay, and then I see chloride. Which is chlorine. Okay, right, because that IDE thing, right? Right. So I take that off and I put it back to chlorine. It's all mm -hmm. the way over here. Right. So that charge would be? Uh, uh, minus one. Minus one. Right. Why wouldn't this column be minus one? Because it's already got its full. It's got eight valence electrons, so it's not going to gain or lose anything. Okay, so we kind of pretend it's not there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so chlorine is a minus one. Okay. And it's Cl. Okay, so now we're going to do something I've heard called a crisscross. Right. Okay. Um, so we have a number here and a number here. What we're going to do is move that number down here uh -huh. and move that number down here. And we, d right. we ignore the plus and the minus. So I get K1Cl1. The chemists don't like to write their ones. Really? Yes. Okay. So if I say that there's a K in a formula, that means that there's going to be at least one potassium. So you don't have to write your ones. So you can just write it KCL to make it shorter, make it easier. Okay. But if there's a number besides one, I need to have it? Yes. Okay. okay. So. Let's try uh, the next one. Magnesium. All right. Magnesium is MG. Okay. It's so, a plus two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it's in the second column. Right. So it lost two electrons. Okay. So oxide sounds like oxygen, so... Up here. So you told me this column right here is minus one. So that's got to be minus it's two. Because okay. it came two electrons. Oh, and a minus two. Okay. Okay. So... so uh, hmm. Do we have like a flow chart that can help us with this? Okay. That, what you showed me before is pretty easy, but this might make it even easier. Okay. So if I have a flow chart, if I here's the first question: Are both elements non-metals? So no. Uh, how do I know that again? Because one is on the left side of the periodic uh, table, okay. one's on the right side. Okay. So next so, step is to determine the charge on the positive ion. Okay. I did that because that was magnesium plus two. Right. Okay. So. Um, is it a transition metal? No, because it's not groups three through twelve. It was in group two. Okay. Um, is the metal an alkali metal? No. It is not an alkali metal. It is not in group 1A. Okay. Is it an alkaline earth metal? It is. It's in group 2. So we can use the 2 plus charge. There we go. Right. 2 plus charge. So I can look it up on the periodic table. It kind of seemed a little bit faster to me. Mm -hmm. But if I don't That's have it memorized, I, like I can you know, use it? Yes. Okay. So let's look at the other side. It says to determine the symbol and charge of the negative ion. Okay. So is it a polyatomic? I don't even know what that is. Polyatomic ion, poly means many, and atomic is atoms. So it's a bunch of different atoms. So we haven't learned about this one yet. No. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say no, because we don't right. know about that. Um, is it a halogen group 7A? No. No, oxygen wasn't. So it's got to be either nitride, oxide, or sulfide, and our right. problem was mm -hmm. oxide, so it's minus 2. 2. Okay, yep. so that gives me my charges. Now I want to do that crisscross thing. Right. So I'm going to move my 2 down there, and I move my 2 down there, so I get Mg2O2. Okay. Perfect, right? Well, you got to kind of think of the Mg2 and O2 as kind of like a fraction. It's like 2 over 2, and when you have something like that, you can reduce it. It's a ratio. So if I had two magnesiums and two oxygens, it's the same as saying one of each. So MgO is how you reduce that. Okay. 
So if they're the same number, if all of them are the same number, mm -hmm. I can reduce it to one? Right. Okay, cool. Let's do one more, just for practice. Okay. Um, right. Strontium phosphide. So, I guess let's look up strontium, strontium. first. Strontium. We don't use that one very much. Where is it at? It's oh. right here. Okay. So that's so, column two, right? Column two. So if I look um, here, okay. is it, are they both non-metals? Well, if I, you told me the left is metals. Right. So no. So, no. Okay, so let's get the symbol in charge on the positive ion. Mm -hmm. Does it begin with a transition metal? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. Is the metal an alkali metal? No. No, it's not in group one. It is. is it alkaline earth? It is. Yes, so I'm going to give it that plus two charge. So over here, mm -hmm. I'm going to write strontium plus two. Okay. Phosphide. Phosphide is phosphorus. Okay. And it is P. P, and it's three over... I'm going to guess that might be a minus three. That's right. Okay, but I'm also going to show how we can use our flow chart if you don't know that. Mm -hmm. So, um, are they both nonmetals? No. We need the negative ion. Is it a polyatomic? I don't no. know what that is yet. So, no. Is it a halogen? No. No. It was, hmm, it must be one of these, is it? No, it is not. Okay, so I'm going to use my my intuition here though nitride is all right above phosphorus and it's a minus three right so i can put a minus three there so i think it's faster do you agree with shudembowski if i memorize the right. columns yes just know that minus one minus two minus three right you should be able to quickly know how many valence electrons they are so just remember are they going to gain to get to eight or lose to get to zero okay no. so i'm going to crisscross mm -hmm. And so I have SR2. Remember, you don't bring the charge even though, right. or I'm sorry, SR3. My bad. You SR3. don't bring uh, the negative over at all, right. which is SR3. And then P2. Right. Do I need to do anything extra to that? That is it. The way I always remember, I, I say it's you swap and drop. Swap the numbers out, drop the charges. That's pretty catchy, Mr. Murphy. Yes. Okay. All righty. So now we have some practice problems for you guys to try. It's going to be on the same page as your um, uh, where to find the video. So you should see three guided practice problems. I want you guys to pause the video right now and try to do these on your own. And then we're going to show you the answers here shortly. Okay, so right. let's check this out. Um, beryllium fluoride. Right. Let's find beryllium. Beryllium. It is right here. Okay. So it's going to have a positive 2 charge. The second column is positive 2. two. So I'm going to put BE plus 2. Mm -hmm. Fluoride used to be fluorine. Right. And I think it's right up here. Yep. So that's our minus 1 column, right? Minus 1. Okay. Now, could I use a flow chart to do this if I was confused? Absolutely, you could. Okay. So I'm going to swap, swap and drop. Drop the charges, swap the numbers out. Okay, so BE, e. and it would be BE1, but you but said... We don't like, chemists don't, don't like writing ones. Okay. So... So an F2? That's it. Is that it? That is correct. This is not so bad. No. Okay, lithium sulfide. Okay. Lithium. I see LI right over here. Right. First column, so... Oh, plus one? Plus one. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Mm-hmm. Sulfide. Sulfur. Because uh, you take the iodide off. Uh -huh. I wonder why it's not sulfine. That's kind of weird. I don't know. Sulfur is minus two. Minus two. It's in the second column. Mm -hmm. So now I drop and swap. Mm -hmm. and I crisscross. I would get Li2S1, but I don't write that one. Right. Okay. That's it. Perfect. Let's do one more. Okay. Aluminum nitride. Okay. Aluminum. Aluminum is a trickier one. Well, what would the charge of that be? Well, if it's got three electrons, because three valence electrons, because it's family 13, it's going to drop those three electrons, so it'll be a positive three charge. Okay. So Al plus three, and I need nitride, that sounds like. like nitrogen. Okay. And that's minus one, minus two, minus three. Mm hmm So I put in minus three. Okay. I'm going to drop a swap. So I have Al3N3. Okay. Am I looks forgetting like, something? Looks like that can be reduced. Oh, because they're both threes, right? Right. So it's the same ratio, so it's really one and one. Cool. Perfect. I think I can do this. All right.